Hello, my name is Brian Oberty. I'm a performance engineer at Argonne National Lab. Today I'll be presenting the work done by myself and John Tran to evaluate the performance of the HipSickle toolchain for HPC kernels on NVIDIA V100 GPUs. The US Department of Energy Leadership Computing Facilities are currently using and will continue to use GPU accelerated systems for the next wave of HPC computing. The current system summit at Oak Ridge National Laboratory utilizes IBM CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, while the upcoming system Aurora at Argonne National Laboratory will utilize Intel CPUs and Intel GPUs. And then Oak Ridge's next system, Frontier, will utilize AMD CPUs and AMD GPUs. This shows an increase in diversity in the GPUs which are going to be used for scientific computing. Because of this, developers are interested in, program, interested in porting to programming models which are portable across various architectures. This has led to a demand for performance analysis across programming models to understand where they can get good performance and also portability to be used in the future. We will provide a focused performance analysis of CUDA and SICL programming languages by running them on the NVIDIA V100 GPUs, such as the ones that are present on the Summit system. In this study, we'll use the following technologies. We'll use the CUDA programming model from NVIDIA, which is supported on Summit, which is designed to work with C, C++, and Fortran by providing a scalable programming that is easy to pick up. Also, we'll use Sickle, which will be supported on Aurora and builds on the underlying concepts of OpenCL while including the strengths of single source C++. Uh, this also gives you a hierarchical parallelism syntax and the separation of data accesses from data storage. The SQL compiler ecosystem is currently growing and becoming more developed as you have multiple compilers that are able to target various vendors' GPUs. For this study, we focus on the HipSicle toolchain from Excel Alpay, which is a SICL compiler targeting AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. HipSicle provides a 1.2.1 SICL implementation that's built on top of NVIDIA's CUDA and AMD's HIP. It includes two major components. There's a SICL runtime that runs on top of the CUDA and HIP runtimes, and a compiler plugin to compile SICL using CUDA, the CUDA front end of Clang. Building on top of CUDA, provides us with some nice benefits, such as being able to use the NVIDIA Performance Analysis Toolkit in our study. We'll make the following contributions. We implement a SICL variant to the Raja Performance Suite and port two HPC mini-apps to CUDA and SICL. We'll collect performance data on the Raja Performance Suite for the programming models and tool chains of interest. We'll then investigate the significant performance differences that we found in the benchmark suite. And additionally, we will collect and analyze the performance of two HPC mini apps, an NBody mini app and a Monte Carlo Neutron Transport mini app. To provide a brief overview of the benchmarks that are used in this study, we use the Raja Performance Suite, which is a collection of benchmark kernels that are of interest to the HPC community, providing us with many small kernels and many data points. And then we'll go into more depth with an NBody mini app which is a simple simulation of a dynamical system of particles, and the XS Bench Mini app, which is computationally representative of many Monte Carlo transport applications. The Raja Performance Suite is a collection of performance benchmarks that are implemented in a variety of programming models with both Raja and non-Raja variants. Raja is a programming abstraction that sits on top of other programming models to enable easy changing between these various programming models such as HIP, CUDA, and OpenMP target. We will only utilize the CUDA's non-Raja variant of the performance suite along with the serial version in order to verify correct execution. Additionally, we'll utilize the SICL implementation which we provide of the performance benchmarks. And from there, we'll do our performance study. The performance suite is broken into five basic groups the first of which is basic. It includes things such as DAXB and initialization. The next is the stream group, which is based on the classic stream benchmark. Next is the alcals group, 
which is focused on loop optimization benchmarks. These are kernels which can benefit from a variety of difficult loop optimizations. And then there is Polybench, which is a well-known benchmark suite for use for kernels that are can utilize polyhedral optimizations. And finally, there are some kernels that are pulled directly from applications. For our SQL implementation of the Raja Performance Suite, we take the mindset of a developer who has an existing CUDA implementation that would like to maintain the performance they get while porting the code into SQL. As shown here on the left, we have a CUDA example that is similar to many of the kernels that are implemented in the Raja Performance Suite. On the right shows how we, in general, implemented our SQL variant. Drawing attention to several small details, the first of which is that the block size given is explicit for both of our CUDA and SQL examples to ensure that we have the same execution for both programming models. I'd also like to draw attention to the differences in the sizes that are passed into the parameter from an ANDY range and passed into the parameter from an ANDY range in SQL versus the CUDA implementation, which passes in the number of blocks and not the overall size of the index space. For our implementation, we calculate our index by using the get group, get local range, and get local ID function calls from the ND item. This is very comparable to the way that the index is calculated in CUDA using the block ID, block dim, and block IDX structure. This could be avoided by simply using the get global ID, which would minimize the verbosity that is introduced in our SQL implementation. The largest difference between the CUDA and SQL implementations is the way the memory is managed. In CUDA, we have an explicit memory management model, which involves malloc'ing memory on the device, copying memory over, copying it back after kernel execution, and finally freeing the device memory. In SQL, however, we have an implicit memory model where we declare a buffer that is tied to a host array. We submit our kernel along with an accessor saying which memory we are looking to read or write. And then finally, that memory won't be copied back to a host array until our buffer falls out of scope. So that is the most substantial difference between these two is the implicit and explicit memory models. For our purposes, this shows that our the timings, the start timer and stop timer functions that are utilized and built into the Raja Performance Suite will not be comparable as the SICL version will include memory transfer time, whereas the CUDA version is able to do this ahead of time. There is no explicit data movement in SICL. If we want to force the runtime to copy the memory that is tied to a buffer to the device, we need to submit to that device. Shown here is a simple function we utilize to trigger data movement ahead of time before submitting our real work kernel. This is not ideal because we're able, we have to submit a separate kernel just to get the memory to move. As long as the buffer stays in scope, the memory will not be transferred back. This is a standard SQL implementation, but there is an additional way we could do this using Intel's DPC++. DPC++ is a SQL implementation that includes several extensions, including the USM proposal, which stands for Unified Shared Memory, which includes basic explicit memory movement, such as mem copies and malloc device calls. In the future, we will use this for a more direct comparison that includes the data movement. But for the time, for the current time, we will sidestep this issue through the use of the MVProf performance profiling tool. For our performance analysis, we run an NVIDIA V100 GPUs that are tied to Intel Xeons. We use HIPSICL Git Revision 1779E9A and CUDA version 10.0.130. As mentioned earlier, we utilize MVProf to collect kernel timings without including the time that is spent on memory transfer. Shown below is a stripped down example of the kind of output from MVProf, which gives us 
the various activities that were on the GPU, such as mem copies from the host of the device, but also the kernel submissions, such as the first diff kernel from the Raja Performance Suite. Here we're able to see the total amount of calls and the total time, but for us, we utilize the average time that is presented to us for the kernel execution. Additionally, it is nice to be able to see the min and max that bounds the range of times that we saw for our kernel execution. For our performance analysis of the Raja Performance Suite, we scaled the problem size by a factor of five in order to fill the GPU. Shown on the right are our results. There are five kernels that were not measured because there were missing features in the Hipsicle compiler. Our understanding is that these features just simply have not been implemented yet, and we will go back to improve and our coverage of our performance analysis when they are available. The graph on the left shows the speed up of the sickle variant relative to the CUDA variant, showing the kernels that are up top in red are showing faster performance with the CUDA version than the kernels on the bottom in blue, which are showing faster performance with the sickle version. As we see here, most of the kernels are actually within a very close range of each other, and the performance is very comparable between Sickle and CUDA for this toolchain. Additionally, we see that while there are several kernels that are showing significant performance differences, they are fairly balanced on either side of CUDA and Sickle. So we have many that are outperforming with CUDA and many that are outperforming with Sickle. We investigated several of these outliers to try to understand what was causing these performance differences. For all of the benchmarks, which all happen to be part of the Polybench benchmarks, there was a major difference in how well the memory bandwidth was utilized. To try to further understand this, we looked at the assembly code from the NVPTX and noticed that the CUDA version is utilizing non-coherent memory loads, while as the Hipsicle compilation is not. The performance from the Raja Performance Suite gave us confidence to do more in-depth performance analysis of several HPC mini-apps. The first of which is an M-Body Simulation mini-app, which is the M-Body Simulation mini-app, which is the simulation of point masses. The position of the particles are computed using finite different methods, and each particle stores its position, velocity, and acceleration. At each time step of the algorithm, the force of all particles acting on one another is calculated in an O to the n squared fashion. The performance we were able to collect is shown here. On the right, we see a graph showing the average kernel time from NVProf meaning that lower is better. We see that the CUDA performance is, out, is better than the Hipsicle performance for this particular mini app. Once again, we went through some of the MV metrics and assembly code to try to understand why this performance difference existed. For this code, we found very similar performance metrics almost across the board for memory throughput, occupancy, floating point utilization, for both the CUDA and HIPSICL executions. One of the main differences we were able to locate is that the SICL version was simply executing more instructions, many of these being miscellaneous instructions as shown in the graph below. This leads us to believe that the performance difference is simply because the SICL version was doing more work to get the same solution. The second mini app that we looked at is Access Bench. It is a mini app representing the key kernel in Monte Carlo neutron transport for nuclear reactor simulation. It's driven by large tables of cross section data, such as the ones shown on the right, that specifies the probabilities of interactions between the neutron and the different types of atoms. This features highly randomized memory access, which becomes very difficult to get running efficiently on most HPC architectures. Like all of our benchmarks, this is open source and available on GitHub. 
Our results for excess bench are shown here. On the right, the graph indicates our figure of merit for excess bench, which is the number of cross-section lookups that we're able to perform per second, meaning that higher is better. There are three different methods that are shown here, the unionized, hash, and nuclide methods that all make different trade-offs, including memory footprint size. Looking at the CUDA performance shown in green and the hip sickle performance shown in red, we see that for the hash and nuclide methods, there is very similar performance shown, while the unionized method has a significant difference in the performance achieved. We took a more in-depth look as to why this performance was different. Looking through NVPROF and also the assembly from the MVPTX, we found that the hip sickle toolchain front-loaded all of its loads before performing the flops, whereas the CUDA toolchain, most likely in an effort to reserve registers, performed several loads and then flops and then additional loads. This happened to manifest in performance difference for excess bench because the randomized lookups into the large table have us pay a large memory latency cost for all of our lookups. Having the loads all front loaded allowed us to pay that latency with greater overlap. We were able to verify this by using the intrinsics shown below, underscore underscore LDG, to force continuous load instructions in CUDA. As shown on the blue chart, the Optimus version of CUDA using this intrinsic to force the loads to happen right away ended up performing even better than the hip sickle version. In conclusion, we found that sickle using hip sickle is showing competitive performance to CUDA on NVIDIA devices. We also found that having a common performance analysis tool across both programming languages was very useful. In several of our other studies, we found many subtle details that come up when using different performance measurement tools on different devices with different programming models. Being able to utilize the same tool helps us to identify what are the actual differences in the implementation versus measurement of the performance. Finally, as seen in the XS Mensch mini app, we found that doing these cross programming model studies can provide some insight as to optimization opportunities as we find places where the heuristics for one programming model were chosen better for the specific algorithm in place. In the future, we'd like to utilize larger HPC codes running multi-node problem sizes to ensure that our performance stays competitive when scaling up. We would also like to investigate the performance of additional compiler tool chains for Sickle and CUDA. We would even like to extend to look across various GPUs, including different generations from the same vendor and also GPUs from different vendors. Finally, we're interested in exploring the performance implications of Intel's DPC++ extensions, such as being able to prefetch our data to device ahead of time. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility, Argonne National Laboratory, and DOE, and the Exascale Computing Project for this work. Thank you for your time.